Hello, in this part I would like to present to you how to use queues to transfer a bit more complex data than a standard 8-bit without sign. And in this exercise we'll create the queue which would transfer some structures. So let's start with stm 32 cube ide or Cubemix. I have my ready workspace. I'm creating a new project, so file new stm 32 project. I'm selecting uh, my microcontroller, so this is STM32L476RG. So I just select part of this name. This is this this one, and I press next. Name of this project would be four underscore QS QS and underscore items. I press finish. You can reuse as well previous exercises because in this uh, case we will use again two senders and one receiver. I will start with uh, let's say new project. This is my pinout. I'm selecting from system core and sys debug interface the last option to have SWO line and SWD interface. And I'm changing the time based source for HAL libraries from SysTick to Timer6 to do not have any conflict between my HAL library and operating system. Then from middlewares I'm selecting FreeRTOS in interface CMC's version 2 and within this uh, interface I will extend my heap size to 4 kilobytes. Then within time the tasks and queues I would let's say rename my default task to send their one task, priority normal, a stack size 256 and the entry function start sender one. Then I would create two more tasks. So the next one would be sender two, priority normal, 200 56 as stack size and start sender to as entry function name and last task it would be a receiver so task name receiver priority normal like before 200 56 as a stack size please remember that is given in words and the entry function would be and start receiver that's it. Then we need to define a queue. So I press within the same tab. So tasks and queues and uh, part queues. I click on add. I will change the name of the queue to Q1. And the queue size I would change to 8 to not use too much memory. And item size instead of unsigned in 16, I would just put data, which would be my structure defined in the code. I press OK, and now I'm ready to generate the code. So I can either use this icon or go to project generate code. This time I would use this icon. OK, code is generated, we can perform the code modifications. Within main.c file we can have a look at the location where we are uh, defining the handlers uh, for both sender task and receiver and its attributes and as well the location of uh, defining the handler and attributes for the queue. Then within private variable section, that's line 71, we will define our data structure with which we would like to pass over the queue. It will consist of two fields, one would be unsigned 16-bit uh, uh, value and the second one would be uh, unsigned 8-bit uh, source so this would be value and the second part the second one would be 8-bit unsigned source the name of this structure the name of this type of this structure would be data like specified within the configuration phase after this we'll create two instances of this type 
data to send one with uh, two fields A and one, and this would be sent by a sender one task, and uh, data to send two with fields B and two, which would be sent by sender two task. After this, we can have a look on the location when the queue is created. So this is line 146 and uh, we can see that it's eight component and the data size is taken from this uh, really data and uh, so this is our uh, let's say creation of the of the queue and the next point would be to fill our sender one and sender two uh, tasks functions body so it will be very similar for both of them so we will start from task action so our sign of life in case of sender one it would be small s sent over ITM interface in our example. Then we will try to put some data into the queue. This data to send one, in fact. So we are using OS message queue put function. We can use this control space to have some help. The first argument is a handler to the queue. The second one is an address to our structure. So data to send one in this case. Then there is a message priority which is not used. So we just put a zero and the timeout. So the maximum time we would like to try to send this information, which is 200 milliseconds. After this, we will send our task for two seconds to the blocked state. Similar code will prepare for our sender too, with the difference that this time the task action would be big S, capital S, capital letter, and we will send data to send two instead of data to send one. Then within the receiver, we'll replace uh, the default OS delay one with a bit more complex uh, function structure, but we will start with within the initialization part with uh, declaration of uh, the temporary variable where we will store the data taken from the queue. So this would be data type red value a variable. And then within the infinite loop, we will send, uh, let's say, the sign of life using ITM send char this time. And uh, it will be capital R letter without, uh, let's say, sign of new line, like we are using in a task action. And uh, then we will try to get some information from the queue. So using OS message queue get function. So again, we can use the control space to remind ourselves what is the function name and the same for the argument. So the first argument is, of course, the handler for the Q1. Then uh, there is a pointer to the, let's say, to the um, our storage area. So in our case, this is our local variable red value, which just declared and then the priority is null, as we are not using it, and the timeout, which is the maximum time we would like to wait for the data in the queue, would be OS wait forever. So we will uh, wait till the data will really arrive in the queue. And uh, as soon as we'll have this uh, data in our red value, we will analyze it and perform some actions uh, according to what we just received. So we are using the if-else uh, loop here, and uh, then we are checking what is the source of this uh, of this data taken from the queue. So in case it is one, so it is sent by a sender one task, we would like to turn on LED, uh, this green LED. So we are using GPI, HAL GPIO write pin to this, and we can use uh, our labels. So LED green, or we just uh, can press control space after. Uh, so let green GPIO port as a port, let green pin as a pin, and uh, the last argument would be GPIO pin set to turn on this green LED in case we received information from task, uh, so from sender one. In other case, uh, if we receive information from sender two, we would like to turn off this LED. So we will use the same function, GP, HAL GPIO write pin, but with different last argument uh, instead of set, we will have reset. Okay, so this would be the reaction on sender ID. And then we will send as well the data, the value data over ITM interface using task action function. And in this case, we are just uh, taking value from the data structure to send it over task underscore action function. So this would be our uh, start receiver code in this case. So as you can see, we will start from sending R, then doing some action on 
LED if something will come and then send again something which we just received from the queue. And uh, what we need to do else is to define our task underscore action function, which is uh, returning no value and it is accepting one argument, it's one har argument. And within this, uh, we will use uh, itm data send, uh, send char uh, function, which is uh, sending uh, one character uh, over itm interface. We will observe it later on within a single wire viewer uh, console during debug session. After this uh, sending uh, the, the single character, we will send as well the sign of new line uh, just to have uh, each uh, component uh, one by one uh, to have, let's say, better view within the console. We need, of course, to add the declaration of this function at the end, uh, in, let's say, user code uh, private function prototype. And we are ready to build the code using the hammer icon, what you can just see on the screen. OK, there are no errors. We've got uh, uh, some warnings. Because we, I for forgot to put the, the type of both variables. So let's try once again. Now it's much better. Zero errors, zero warnings. OK, so after successful compilation, uh, let's connect our ports and start a debug session. So I click the back icon. Within the debugger, I'm enabling the serial wire viewer and I'm changing the core clock to 4 MHz, which we are using. Then apply and OK. Take some time. And after it, see this, uh, I'm opening my SWD the ITM data console which you can see on the screen. Then I'm using the configuration and enabling channel zero and start tracing with this uh, red dot. Uh, after this, I can just play um, the code execution and test pause it. And I can see the result, the result like, uh, like expected. So at the beginning, I can see the receiver, which is stop. So this is the single R. And then uh, there is a small letter from sender one, which just passed the, info, the data to the queue. Yes, so this is the receiver and it is it blocks after this because it is waiting for the data in the queue. This is why we cannot see anything else. Then uh, we've got small s, so this is sender 1, which sent uh, data to send 1 into the queue. After this we've got big s, so sending uh, the data to send 2 into the queue. And after this we can see a. Uh, so this is the continuity of uh, execution of receiver, in fact, uh, from line 318. and let's say sending the data of our sender one from the queue because it was the first one sent after this we can see the next iteration of uh, the receiver this is why this we've got this big r and uh, the small b means that we are sending the data from our sender two uh, so this is it uh, then we've got the third iteration of receiver this is why this is the big r and after this there is a small s Small s means that uh, there is uh, activity of uh, sender 1 again. And after this, uh, we can see uh, again the activity of sender 2. This is big S just below the cursor. And the situa situation continues like this. So again, we've got small a, which is the first component within the queue. And uh, then we've got uh, next iteration of uh, receiver. This is big R and then B because it received the second component from the queue sender sent by the sender 2. And the story continues like we can see in the loop. Here we can see again the, what is done within the task sender 1 task. And in both cases we've got two seconds delay which sent those tasks into the blocked state for two seconds. We can start terminate the debug session. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this uh, video.